In this video, we're going to take a look at Autodesk Inventor 2013 Sketching Enhancements. We're going to start off here by looking at the parameters dialog. And this, is, again, is primarily a place where you can input values, change names of elements to your sketch elements or your modeling elements. But one of the things I get asked a lot about is how to input parameter text into a text value on a sketch. A lot of people do this with their part numbers or other tracking numbers. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. I'm going to go ahead and create a new sketch and use that parameter you just saw as an internal part number. I'm going to put a piece of text down here and you'll notice that down below I can now have component, source, parameter, and precision and also the standard insertion uh, for my text parameter. So this will remember what my parameter value is. I'm going to just call this a PN hashtag here and I'll say OK with middle center justification on this. Uh, just go ahead and quickly line up the midpoints and vertical here to make sure this is nice and centered on this part face. And this can obviously be used for an embossment or an engraving but uh, I'm going to go ahead and double click the text. That's another new enhancement. Uh, before you could right click and edit text you still can do that but now you can double click the text to modify it as well just like you would do inside the drawing environment. Here we'll change the part number value and you can see it automatically does update. I don't have to push any updates. So a nice enhancement. We, we can use our true and false, our text statements, and our number values from parameters as a text object and make it easily editable. We also have the ability now to find a dimension in our graphical window, right click on it and use a find in browser. So this will show me exactly where that sketch is just by right clicking on a dimension. Now that's great for very long feature trees. If you only have four sketches it's not a big deal but for very long feature trees it's very productive to help you locate a certain sketch. Now here in this brand new file, this is something we had in our general enhancement video as well, uh, when we start a brand new sketch in a part mode we do have to pick our plane. So we get to see the origin planes there. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and select a plane that I want, such as the XY plane or the YZ plane, and I'll start sketching on there. If you want to go back to the old way of doing it, you just have to adjust your application options for that. Now here notice my sketch uh, one here has a little thumbtack on it. That's another new enhancement for that icon that lets you know that something is fully constrained. Very helpful when you're diagnosing sketches. Next we'll look at the center point rectangle. We can do this as a two point or a three point rectangle. This was a very much desired enhancement. People have been asking for this one for a long time. Uh, I got to the point where I had to have a, a third party add-in that I wanted it so bad, but now it's nice that it's fully included. So here's a three, three point uh, center point rectangle. Here I'll just specify the angle of 45 and then put my size in. So you can do this as a two point or a three point uh, center point rectangle. And we also have a new spline option. We have a in, uh, control vertice spline. This allows us to create a spline using different control vertices that would help influence the spline as we're creating it. It's really a different type of spline. And this is also available in the 3D sketch environment too. Now you can see when I pull on these control vertices, it actually will influence that curvature of the spline. And you can also use this for uh, constraining references with those construction lines as well, and as well as with the endpoints of the spline, just like normal. But now this is a new type that we have available to us. I'll just go ahead and delete that quick. Next we'll look at enhancement for the perpendicular constraint. Yeah, good old perpendicular. He got a little bit of an enhancement. I'm going to go ahead and just draw a line coming off of this rectangle and then put an arc in from here to here. And what I want is I want that arc to be tangent going through the end point of that line. So I'll go up here and hit perpendicular, hit my arc, hit my line, and now it's perpendicular running into that end of that end, end point of that line. That's a nice enhancement. Before this would just infer that. Now it actually does persist it when you create it. Uh, notice down below we also have a status bar now that's very eerily similar to AutoCAD. So we have a snap to grid, we have our show and hide all constraints, we have our dimension uh, view toggle to different types of dimension view types, 
we have our slice graphics, and we also have our show degrees of freedom and high degrees of freedom. So this was something that was added a couple years ago, but now it's much more discoverable now that we have it as a status bar. Now we have another nice enhancement for dimensioning. So here we have a radial dimension. I'm going to right click and change that type to arc length, which was very uh, much requested as well. People always wanted this inside the sketcher. It was always available in the, the drawing side, but not necessarily over here. So now I can actually put a arc length on that arc segment there. Next up, we're going to take a look at equation curves. So with this is a new command, it's available in 2D and 3D sketching. We can actually de define an equation based on some normal, normal calculus over here. Uh, so we can do this with our equation here. I'll just have my t1 and my y will be t squared. We'll do zero, two points. And basically it creates this parabolic curve for me. And if I were to dimension this, put a line on here maybe, let's just close this off as a profile quick, you'll see that upper right point should be two units away. And it is. And that can be done with Cartesian or polar coordinates. If you want to use thetas, you can use thetas. So you, you do have quite a few options here for equation curves. That really opens up the, the higher ability uh, of the software to generate points. Before these were just available as kind of samples inside the samples of the software. So now we can actually create these on the, with our own equations. Next up we'll take a look at this sketch over here. And what I want to show you first is something that kind of drives me nuts sometimes when I'm sketching something and I don't pay attention to what I'm doing. I'll go ahead and draw a rough outline of something. I'll go ahead and size it. But you know what? Maybe this thing needs to be like two inches tall. That thing's 0.838. Well, if I were to adjust this, I might lose my rectangle, or I might lose my triangle there. Well, the first sketch will now uniformly scale your entire sketch. So watch again. I'll go ahead and put this on, and we'll just leave that alone. Now, if you add a second sketch element, a second dimension, and try to change it, you can see nothing scales. That's kind of the way it used to do it. But if you just have one dimension on there, and you resize it, it will resize the entire thing. So that helps you get off to a much better starting point for scaling when you're starting to do your dimensions. Next we'll look at dynamic trim and extend. So with this, it's normal, you know, we can click on trim, we can click the elements, but now if we click and hold and we drag our cursor, this little dotted line shows up behind our mouse, and any normal visible line we cross over will be automatically selected. It's kind of like a, a dynamic fence, if you will. So I'm basically just dragging my cursor over geometry here, Anything that's crossing over, it's automatically cutting off, and I'm seeing that. And the same is said for extend. So you can do the extend or the trim with this dynamic uh, tool. So you just drag your cursor over your geometry, and it will automatically extend the geometries as well. Just less uh, clicks you have to do, just a little bit of dragging now. Here we'll take a look at the measure distance enhancement. This was nice because now it allows you to do um, measurement of distance between midpoints, which was uh, also much requested. And this not only works in the sketcher, I should say this also works in the modeling side. So yeah, I know we're here for talking about sketching, but you know it's really cool to show it in the modeling side too. So I'll just jump over here and show you that you can get any two midpoints and get your dimensions between those now as well. Now there are some other enhancements that were included in the sketching system as well. I just didn't have time to talk about them today. So there is 2D mirror self-spline symmetric. That basically is a, a tool for mirroring when you have a symmetric spline. Um, there's also quite a few 3D sketching enhancements. Some of them I already mentioned, but uh, definitely something you should investigate on your own. And we will cover them more in the future on the blog.